Guru Talk. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's a very special episode because we're not going to be talking necessarily about the usual topics we talk about. It's going to be about what can go wrong when you do too much, okay? Get excessive with drug use, get excessive with steroids, recreational drugs. What could go wrong and, 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 and how you can possibly maybe either die and maybe be given the next chance or another chance. And to talk about uh, this topic with me, I have a very special person here, Tori Curvin. I want to welcome you to Guru Talk. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. Now, Tori, you have a very interesting story. Your brother contacted me and said, you got to talk to my brother. He's, he's a guy. We got to get the story out. You were a guy who used anabolic steroids. You know, you used recreational drugs, cocaine, crystal meth. Um, you wound up in a hospital a few weeks ago. Uh, basically dying. Is that correct? Yeah. You died. You coded on the table. I, yeah, I coded. I coded. Okay. Te let's, let's take a step back now. How'd you get involved in the whole bodybuilding industry and, and, and recreational drug use in general? Well, give us, had, your, give uh, us your story, you know, backstory. I had um, severe dyslexia and uh, ADHD. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is back when Ritalin first came out then they it was experimental you know so they tried Ritalin they tried Ritalin on me I didn't like it it either didn't do anything or drug me so a lot of times they would you know the, the they, they had it at they had it at school for me so they would they would give me the pill and tell me to go in the bathroom and take it half the time it went in the commode oh really <laughs> yeah. now you, uh, you would have used it uh, that, as, right? far as, me getting, as far as me getting into uh, the weightlifting is I I suffered from real poor poor self-esteem uh, issues. Uh, I didn't really like myself a lot. I felt dumb because I had a, a, a learning disability. Right. Um, and then, then uh, I discovered weights. Uh, uh, my brother took me to a bodybuilding competition here local in the local city. And uh, I never even worked out before at the time, but I was 14 and I was in awe of those guys. And, and uh, I started, I started, we had some plastic weights. And I started lifting weights at home. Gotcha. So you and it really helped my team out. Yeah, you start working out. You obviously you get bit by what the call we call the iron bug, so to speak. And you know, did you when did you, did you do your first competition as a teenager? No, no, I just did my first competition a few years ago. Oh wow! So you just we're just training basically. Well, I mean, I, I just trained. It was always about the lifting weights to me. It was, mm -hmm. uh, and and most of the time, either the gym I worked out at didn't have a radio or or anything. It was never about. Uh, I would just eat the magazines up and. And look at the magazines because I started working out in 1988. Right. You know, the only, you know, uh, you know, it was magazines mainly. Uh, and I would always go in the store. I just looked at the pictures. Uh, were you, you know, were, did I, you become a big guy? I mean, were you, were you very muscular at some point? Uh, I was probably in good shape then. Uh, you know, at my biggest, probably 290 pounds. Okay. So you were big. You were a big guy. Yeah. Well, I'm 6'5. Yeah. I'm 6'5. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, the ripped on stage probably, you know, uh, I mean, I was 250. Okay, that, that, that's a big guy. That's a big, big guy. At yeah. what point did you start using anabolic steroids? How old were you? Well, probably the first time I used them, I basically virtually, I say worked out pretty much virtually 25 years clean. I did a little bitty three-month cycle, I think, of some Anadrol 50 when I was 19. Then you fast forward to when I was 36, I did about an eight-month little cycle of Winstraw. And then when I hit my 40s is when I cycled steroids and did not yeah, stop. Yeah, why do you think you waited that long? What, what, what at 40 made you just, were you having a midlife crisis? Well, no, because I had, uh, the drugs were more available than they'd ever been before. Um, they were uh, more affordable. And um, they, um, they, uh, I saw, I, I started working out and, and got with a friend of mine that said, he's a good dude. And, and he uh, he knew a little bit of how to diet, and and uh, and I said, uh, I wonder if I'd ever, ever do anything like that. He looked at me and said, Yeah, you got the body, you can do it. I said, Are you serious? I just never thought I had the body. Right, but self esteem yeah, my again, self yeah, my bad self esteem. Yeah. yeah, pardon me. I said once again, you had bad self esteem, as you said in the beginning. I can't hear you. Bad self esteem. 
Yeah, yeah, really, really bad self-esteem. And I still suffer with that to this day. I, I, I try to work on that. I don't, I don't, uh, I never hear, uh, uh, you know, if I, I can hear you look great a uh, million times, it's that one, uh, you don't look good or you, you're heavy or something or <laughs> you're skinny. That's the only thing I hear. Right. Now, during this whole time period from your 20s, 30s, into your 40s, were you using any kind of recreational drugs at that point? Were you self-medicating? Yeah, I used, uh, I used uh, a lot of alcohol. Alcohol got me in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> legally, I mean, I got DUIs and and uh, bar fights and and, uh, and and just just I got a lot of trouble from alcohol because the, the way I say it is is uh you know want to see any of that alcohol when it comes to me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so you're, uh, you're drinking a lot at this point. Is that is that I, 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 was, I was a binge drinker. Uh, so I, I drank, you know, what, well, I had people tell me that, hey, man, you got to know your limitations. And I, and I tell them my limitations was is when there wasn't no more beer to drink and I couldn't get to the store to get no more. Oh, wow. so you were an alcoholic, essentially. Basically, yeah, but uh, I didn't drink nonstop. You know, I would uh, um, I would sober up usually on uh, Monday and, and uh, you know, I didn't drink all week, you know, because I had, I had to work out. You know? Right. Right. OK, so you were a functional alcoholic, essentially. I was a binge alcoholic. Yeah, I was uh, basically a functioning alcoholic, maybe. But uh, boy, it got me in some trouble. And a lot of times, I, I would go to establishments and I wouldn't show my face to him when I was sober again. <laughs> really? Wow. Now, let me ask you this question: When did you start using like recreational drugs? When did that probably enter the mix? Recreational cocaine use and stuff like that was probably um, the heavier stuff. Yeah, probably in my twenty twenty. 20 or so. so. But, you know, I smoked pot when I was uh, 11 years old. So. Right, right. Yeah, no one seems to think that that's a big deal, but it's a, it's definitely a gateway drug for sure. So you start using cocaine in your 20s. Um, just recently, though, you really got into the heavy stimulant use. You were smoking crystal meth, right? Yeah, I started smoking crystal meth, yeah. How did that, how do you start doing that? Like, what's the first time you use it? What, how do you get introduced to that? Um, well, I, I used it back in the early 2000s, but I never liked it so much. And um, and uh, and um, because it made me where I didn't eat. And uh, you know, as a bodybuilder, you uh, you you you, you got to eat. You know, you sure. want to eat. You got to keep your weight up. So I didn't like it, uh, but it was a different form of methamphetamine then than what they have now. Uh, the the kind now you you, you can eat on. Um, oh really? What's the difference with it? Why why can you eat in this one? Pardon me. Why could you eat with this current crop of crystal meth out there? Why is there? No, I'm saying why why is it different? Is it the same drug? Isn't it? I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I don't know if it's coming from the cartel or what or but or, or what it is. But it's just back in the day, I think they called it shake and bake. Uh huh. And uh, what it is now, it's a, it's, a, it's like a, a, a super meth. It's made differently. Oh, it's like more pure now. Yeah, it's more pure now. Yeah. So what do yeah, you do? You little... put it, you put it in a pipe and you smoke it. How do, how do you smoke? Yeah, crit? you put it in a pipe. Yeah, I like, I like to put it in a pipe and smoke it. It's probably the most biggest way to waste it though. But I smoke it. Now, why is that? Because it hits you faster. The, yeah, I don't know. I just like every high that you do meth from. It's a different, different. It hits you different. So if I you eat you. it, it hits you different. If you inject it, it hits you different. If you smoke it, it hits you different. If you snort it, it hits you different. Gotcha. I like how it hit me when I smoked it. Right. Now, does, does it mess up your teeth? I heard it, it messes the enamel up on your teeth. Uh, I mean, it can mess your teeth up. Yeah, it can. But, you know, the thing about it is, to answer that question, what messed my teeth up was, you know, back in the uh, <laughs> back in the 2000s, I would get dimes, and I used to like to grab one, and I'd bend my teeth. I'd bend them with my thumb. Oh, really? I'd, Get a dime and and, and uh, bend it like in an L. That wow. cracked my teeth all up. That's what really messed my teeth up. Yeah, I can imagine. That's pretty. That's pretty insane yeah, that you can do that. The whole, yeah, the idiot there. You know. You were able to bend a dime, a dime with your teeth. Yeah, I'd be able to put it in my teeth and bend it with my thumb. I mean, yeah, I could bend it into an L. Wow. Did you do that yeah. while you were when you sober when you did that? I ain't got those, ain't got those teeth anymore. So. <laughs> got, were, were you sober when you did that or no? Uh, I don't know. I, I wound up getting a lot stronger than I was then. <laughs> so, 
So I wasn't strong then, really. I mean, I was—I uh, never been weak, but I wasn't that strong. I never had no big lift in the gym. Right. Probably, when did, probably when did you get? How long did it take you after first trying crystal meth? You know, recently to get hooked on it. Well, I got into a relationship with a girl that you know, and I still love her, but um, she she contacted me and then she liked to do it, and, yeah. Uh, and I got in with her, and man, it was on. How often were you doing it? Every day. How many times a day? Um, usually what I did is, is I would get some, and, 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 and I would initially really get high, and then, and then, and then I, I, this is how I like to, to do it. I, I would really get high, and then, then I would uh, you know, chill for a while and then dissipate, uh, let the high dissipate. Then, then, then I could really function well. Right, right. So you were doing it recreationally, essentially, initially. I, well, initially, I, I never did it to excess where, uh, you know, where I seen aliens or anything like that. I always, <laughs> I never functioned. I didn't hear voices or, you know, uh, sometimes, which is a hell I think there was, I think some of the women was talking code on me. <laughs> yeah, you, think, you, would you, would you stay up, would you stay up for days at a time? I get real space cadets, you know, they were space cadetted out. Yeah. Would you stay and, uh, up for? It'll be nano nano and one another. Tori, would you stay up for days at a time when you were on crystal meth? I've stayed up. I've stayed up now. Now, mind you, probably yeah, I would stay up a week two at a time. Wow. Uh, I would, uh, you know, the meth. The thing about meth and and meth and, and the stimulant meth, you know, it, it pops off of uh, you know, I hate to say it, it pops off sex real. You know, it's a big thing. So you know, you get high on meth, man, you you can go for a while. I heard that. I, I talked to people who told me that. I, I would think stimulants would kill your sex drive, but they say no, it does the opposite. No, 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 no. It didn't heightens all that stuff. And then the thing about it is, is it really gets confusing because of the drugs. And, 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 and you know, man, I, 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 you know, listen, like I always say, you look like a rock star, you got to be able to perform like a rock star, man. And I had a good body. Uh, I, I never wore my shirt. You know, I mean, I always had my shirt. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I was built, I was made for it. So that's how I looked at it. Unfortunately, yeah, you, it, it was became too glamorous of a lifestyle, it seems like for you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, it's, it's nothing to glamorize or anything like that. Um, it was a battle I had to go through, I think, to come out the other side to be able to have a testimony. Now, you know, because uh, without uh, God in my life and without Jesus, you know, I'm not here. Right. Now, let's talk to me about the day where you had the heart attack and where you actually died. What? Talk me through that, that day. From the heart attack. It wasn't a heart attack. I just got to, I'd Quit. been, I had, I had been getting distension. I had distension on my stomach and it started holding water a lot. Mm-hmm. And I noticed certain, because I always got high grade GH. Um, the GH that I would get was uh, the certain ones. It, it seemed like, boy, I got some real high quality GH, and it, it, it just some of it just made me hold a ton of water. Right. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of it made me hold water more. So I blamed a lot of it on the GH. But a lot of times, say I would sometimes crash off of uh, meth. I just uh, you know didn't want to do any or whatever. And, you know, sometimes I'd sleep for a week. Wow. And I noticed that once I would uh, once I would wake up, I would be start a whole lot of water. So, in the left ventricle, which is where my issue was, is that's the systemic output. That's the biggest part of your heart. Right. That's what body wants to get uh, enlarged on them. Right. But uh, that is what uh, you know. I wasn't getting a lot of a lot of output. And uh, the body looked healthy, but uh, it was uh, making me hold a lot of water in my trunk. So, so your, around the lung, your cardiac that's output good. in your left ventricle was was so low that the the fluid was backing up in your system essentially. Yeah, I couldn't hardly breathe. My and I got I got you know I got abs and everything. I'm yeah. cutting my stomach just got pooched out. And uh, when I went to the emergency room, uh, uh, the the guy said, "Well, your stomach's a little 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 pooched out, but it's not that bad." I said, "No." Nah. I pulled up a picture on my camera. I said, "That's what my stomach normally looks like, you know." And I got, I got, I got, I'm, I'm flat stomach. I got abs. I mean, sure. I'm, I'm stressed. And so the guy, so they, what did they do? What test did they do on you? Well, uh, they started taking water off of me. Now, um, I put how many, how many liters? They pulled it about two liters, I think. I'm not sure. What they, they, they give you liters of Water off of me. They got nine up at UAB. They pulled several liters of water off of me, and um, 
and uh, you using and what? Lasix. I, I knew that's where I left ventricle. They need to do echo. They need to do an echo and a cath and a catheter on me. And, right. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I was uh, I didn't want to do any of that stuff, but uh, you know, I figured uh, I was hurting so bad, I knew With something was wrong. Yeah, we did. We got. They told me I was in heart failure anyway. So. Kidney failure, heart. Kidney failure and heart failure, but the, the kidney failure was stemming from the heart. So right, right. So now you're in the hospital, okay? They they're doing all these tests on you. Are you still using crystal meth, or did you stop cold turkey at that point? No, I had to, I mean, hell, I was in the hospital. I didn't have anybody bring it up there to me, but I was, I was, you know, no, I was not doing. Were, you, not were you having withdrawals? If I did all my withdrawals, my crash, it all happened. I was uh. I was unconscious for nine days. So. All right. So what? Yeah. What? I when did you go out? When did you become unconscious? Uh, they did uh, some. They, they did. Uh, they did. I went into the cath, the cath lab and I uh, coded in there. Oh, you coded while they were cathing you? Yeah, I coded when they were cathing me. Yeah. Before or something. That during the cath. That somehow. Well, they did that. They did the catheter on me. So they right. checked out that whatever part of my heart. But some at some point uh, I coded in there. Yeah. Did they say? And did they I, ever tell you why? We never well, they said, yeah, we haven't found out everything, but they just said that I told them that if y'all lay me down, I'm not going to be able to breathe. Yeah. So you so, think it was you? So you think it was the test that actually caused you to go out, huh? I don't know. I don't really know. Right. I really don't know what. So you're out for nine days. Did you have any? Did you have any any recollection of that afterwards when you woke up? Well, I had I had a um, I had an outer body experience. Uh, Tell us about it. When I coded, uh, I know when I coded, uh, you know, uh, you know, when you're under sedation, a lot of folks don't think you can hear. They need to watch out what they say because with my eyes were open, I could see. And um, if, if, you know, uh, a lot of the time I could hear. Now, when I was under sedation, uh, when I was medically induced coma for about nine days, I really don't remember any of that. But prep, prep surgery, right after surgery and all that stuff, I remember all that. So what, what do you remember? Uh, I had uh, I had left my body, and um, I went through it. It was you know I, I believe it was hell. Uh, there were demons in there, and then and they were trying to get uh, get me, and uh, and they were having a fit. But uh, man, they couldn't touch me. And um, then I kept going higher, and I went uh, through uh, you know like earth, like black earth, and came out the other side of. Uh, of uh, when, when I come out of it, was, it appeared to be water, and it was just dunes of gold around me, and I was at very much peace. Uh, I did, uh, I was, I, I felt good. Uh, I mean, it was everything was taken from me, and and uh, I didn't want to come back. Right. I did not, absolutely did not want to come back, and uh, been uh, probably all that probably took uh, twenty to thirty seconds, and 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 then I started getting pulled back through. So. Um, obviously there was things that, uh, you know, that God wants me to do still here. So you, you're, you actually left your body. You went through up into wherever you want to say you went to. I, you, you're not really sure of where it was, but you was, you were certainly not in your body at the time, but you, you were able to hear. No, that's I didn't, I didn't, I had an outer body experience, but right. I didn't leave my body and see my body or anything like that. It's, it's, I left my body and then well, I went elsewhere. Let's right. Just put it that way. Right. And when do you remember actually coming back into your body or waking up? Did you wake up at some point? Uh, I woke up in the cath lab to, you know, it was just not real pleasant. I was innovated and all that stuff. And, and, um, there were some, uh, you know, some, you know, I think they didn't think I really was going to live, but you know, some people were Thank wheeling you. me around and saying, you know, yes, guy's old bodybuilder and all that. Look what he's done to himself now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Oh, I really? Think, wow. Yeah. And what, what were they doing to you? Were they administering CPR or what were they you know, giving you? No, I'd already been, all that had already been done. I, I just had a, uh, they had strapped me down and uh, I, I, I had, uh, they had intubated me. So I had a tube in my mouth. Now, why, did they, why did they put you into a, a medically induced coma after that? They didn't want oh, me moving. He had a, he I had had a, a balloon pump. I had a balloon pump. pump. Balloon heart pump. In my what mind. is that? Explain to our viewers what that is. I, I don't even know. Um, it's a catheter type thing run up through the femoral artery into the left ventricle of the heart that's on a machine and it beats. 
So it assisted his heart in, in infusing blood through it. Gotcha. So it, it's, it's, yeah, it's blown up. It's, it's put through my femoral artery, put outside of my heart. It was, and they, they, it was in my heart, and, and they blow it up, and it, it helps the heart. Because the heart, Pumps. How, the, how the doctor told me yesterday, he said, your heart is beating like that. And the heart's supposed to beat like that. Right. So it, it wasn't. And I guess with the pump in there, it was helping it push blood out. More. Gotcha. Till it recuperate. Right. So it could recuperate. So now, did, how I, long were you on that pump? Pardon me? How long were you on the pump? Four days. Four days. And you know. what what changed in your heart that enabled you to get off this pump and all of a sudden start to regulate your bodily processes? Yes. I think a lot of prayers. Oh. And, um, yes. You think you were and, miraculously uh, healed? I think, well, I think a lot of, uh, man, I, I just, God gave me one tough body. And, uh, you know, and I abused it. And, and, and the thing about it is, is the, the only thing that was failing on me was my heart had been weakened. And, uh, and um, I've really got a tough body. I mean, I've always been tough. So I, I don't know. I, I think a lot of years of working out, I just, man, I never missed them. You know, I worked out. I always worked out. I've always worked out. You know, I just always worked out. And I think I built my body up as just tough, probably. Probably if I was a weaker person and didn't start working out at that young of an age and been religious about it my entire life, I, I don't think I probably lived. Did the doctor say you can go back to weight training? Yeah, but, uh, you know, he said, of course, uh, you know, I know my body, but he said that um, the problem is, is, you know, just like with the bench press, it's not going to be the going down. He said, well, I'm going to have the issues to push up. So my power, I'm not going to have a big push to start nope. with. So I just, you know, I know my body, you know, I'm, I'm a certified personal trainer. And all. I mean, I know that uh, I don't really necessarily lift per se heavy anymore anyway. I ain't really got to. I, I just get that contraction. And if I, if I, I tell people, if I want to, I could probably get 25 pounds and get such a contraction, I could tear my bicep. <laughs> what's, your, what's your cardiac output at now? You said it was down to as low as 8%. What I is it at? Happened. 30%. 30%, I think, maybe now. Oh, that, so it's come up quite a bit. Do they think it's going to get better than that? It's come up big time. I, I think I, I should. I mean, I, I mean, I have 100%, uh, you know, with no relapse, I have 100% recovery. So you your, my, my best uh, systemic output, I think, can be 70. Yeah. I figure I'll probably get back to 60 or 70 probably. Yeah, yeah. And what's going to prevent you, I guess, from getting back to that same point you were at before? Have you... Is this revelation that you've gone through this near-death experience? Has it changed you in a way where you don't want to use drugs anymore, or do you think that you might be tempted to go back to that? It's, it's, it's got me where uh, I feel like a lot of fear has left me. You know, at one time I wouldn't done an interview like this at all. Uh, I figure, you know, I mean, there's nobody business, but um, I I think that um, I think that. Uh, uh, you know, I got to stay away from drugs. Right, but it's easier said than done. Right now, you don't feel good, but when you start feeling good again, you go back to the gym. I got a lot of people. I got a lot of people that love me. Yeah. Um, I got to set myself up for success. I got to. I got to. I got to surround myself with the right people and, and stay stay away from. Uh, you know. You know. I don't, you know. If you're sugar, you don't be around shit. So I got to. <laughs> got to stay away from shit. Do you believe in the the whole AA thing or anything like that, or, or you know recovery type of groups? Yeah, I like uh, uh, which is I've been to before, but you know, and they still won't run you off. Their 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 thing is is they just like you not to be under the influence if you're there. Celebrate recovery is a real good. Uh, and you're going in a uh, program, uh, program uh, that's an out. You know, that's where you stay plugged in once you come out. But I'm still planning on going to an inpatient program. Okay. Gotcha. I've never done it before. I've never, I've never thought about not living. Uh, I've never thought about not living uh, sober. No, right. I never thought about living sober. Right. Do you think? You, do you feel you can do it? I, what I'm doing is, I, I have people out there and, who are at it. Uh, my, thing, my thing is, is, is my entire life has been damaged by drugs, and they, they've destroyed my life. And and with that, it just they just folks just ain't seeing what I'm going to do. I mean, it's it's it's, it's going to blow everybody's mind. What, what advice do you have for other people out there who might be watching this, who are in a situation similar to what you were in terms of they're addicted, they're bodybuilders, they work out, 
they use steroids, but they are also addicted to pain meds or they're addicted to stimulants. Well, I mean, how do you do? You have any recommendations on on how you can tell people to get off these you know, things? Well, uh, really, be quite frank. I, my thing was is I really didn't care if I lived or died. Uh, mm -hmm. But fortunately, I lived, uh, and uh, you know, I got people that loved me, and 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 I was fortunate enough to live. Um, you know, a lot of these other guys, uh, there's so many turning points where I could have died. Uh, I could have done this and I'd have died. Well, I got into it with them. Uh, I got into it with somebody before they, before I went into a surgery and all that. And I told them, get out of my room and I'm taking all this stuff out and I'm out of here. <laughs> but if I'd have done that, I'd, I'd went out in my car and I probably wouldn't sleep and I'd have died. I wouldn't have woke up. Right, right. Now, so why there were so many So just, just by the grace of God that, uh, that I'm here, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, somebody needs to start praying for, uh, you know, if they have somebody they love and care about. Or, or they think they have an issue that, that uh, they might need to look into going into a program or something. Or, or, or don't be don't be scared. Uh, don't be scared about uh, anything because you know seventy five percent of the stuff that you worry about it don't never even happen anyway. That's that's right. That's right. Final question, just just for our just for crazy crazy sakes, we like crazy statistics. What was the craziest binge you ever went on in a twenty four hour period? The craziest what binge you ever went on in a twenty four hour period? As far as how much drugs? Yeah, yeah. Like, what was like the, the totals? Like, how much drugs you did? I don't know. Probably uh, this last time. I don't know. I probably done a quarter. I done a quarter ounce of uh, powder cocaine before a weekend and a lot of alcohol. Wow. What's a lot of alcohol to you? Uh, you know, a, a, a gallon, half gallon. Oh my God! Really? Like of like a, like vodka yeah, type yeah. stuff? I, I never, I never. You know, if I drank too much liquor like that, it put me on the commode. I didn't like that stuff that much. <laughs> How? And your liver's fine? Yeah, my liver function's perfect. Yeah, my kidney function's fine. Wow. Well, you quit. I quit drinking too. I didn't. How many years? Ago? I didn't. I, I didn't drink. Uh, once I started meth use, I, drinking went out the window. I didn't have desire to do it. But uh, it started making me, it started getting me so depressed anyway that I, I just I just couldn't do the drinking anymore. And then when I would drink, it would just get me so, that beer, if I drank a beer, it just, ugh, you know, I just, I get full. Right. So I didn't like it. Gotcha. Getting all full feeling and everything. Well, Tori, I wanted to say, you know, thank you for being so honest with us. I, I'm glad that you're still with us. Uh, I'm glad that you had this experience that you could share it with other people. And hopefully if people are watching and they're in a similar situation, would you mind if anyone ever got in touch with you if they had a similar problem and they wanted to talk to you about it? Sure, yeah. What's the best way to reach you? Um, you have yeah, an email? Um, it's, uh, my email is uh, Tori Curvin at 629 uh, gmail at gmail.com. Okay. And uh, I do have a GoFundMe too. Okay. Now, what's the GoFundMe for? Uh, the GoFundMe, I don't have any insurance or anything. Oh, so, you, oh, so you're in the. How much money do you owe? Uh, do what now? How much money do you owe to the, the hospital? Whew, I don't know. No, yet. I don't know. I don't, I don't have it. I didn't have any money to get food and all that when I got out. I don't even know. Wow. Well, I think UAB is, is I'm, I'm going to tell you, they have a children's hospital up there too, by the way. Yeah. But I mean, that place, I don't know if you've ever, I know you were in medical school at one time. Yeah. That place is incredible. Yeah, that's the University of Alabama, Birmingham. That's uh, my good Man, friend yeah, Susie Blaylock works there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that place is, I mean, I just, it's. Hats off to Dr. Talage. Yeah, Dr. Talage was my heart doctor. Dr. Talaj, kind of renowned. and uh, he's world renowned, and and and, and his uh, his protege is uh, Alberto uh, MD. Uh, you know, they 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 were just incredible. All the nurses up there were just awesome. I mean, I just cannot say enough about that university. Oh. Just how good they are. I'm glad they saved your life, Tori. What, what's the GoFundMe page? What is it called? Tori Curvin. Tori Curvin. Okay. And if anyone out there wants to help contribute to, to offset your medical bills, you can go to the Tory Curvin uh, GoFundMe page. Thank you, Tory, for being so honest with us and for giving us your story. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on here. All right, my friend. And guys, right. that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Guru Talk. Once again, hopefully you guys took home a, a serious message here today, which was, Recreational drugs and bodybuilding, and especially bodybuilding drugs, do not mix. Um, if you consider yourself a bodybuilder or an athlete, you should not be using recreational drugs. 
They are not going to help you performance in any way. They're not going to help you health, and they actually might wind up making you dead. And that's something we do not want here. So uh, I'm Dave Palumbo with Tori Curvin today. We'll see you next time.